You can't get numb at the dentist? Let's talk. Hi, my name is Whitney and I'm a dental hygienist here to talk about getting numb at the dentist. So there are actual scientific reasons that determine whether or not you numb up at the dentist with local anesthetic. And quick side note, lots of people call it Novocaine, but PSA, it's not Novocaine. Dentists actually haven't used Novocaine in decades because better numbing agents are available now. And today most dentists use lidocaine, articaine, mepivacaine, etc. It's not really important to know this, but I figured this is a pretty appropriate time to mention this fact since this video is about getting numb. I never want to correct patients when they ask for Novocaine. I'm just like, oh, okay, you want to get numb? Because I'm always afraid I'll sound like I'm like a know-it-all <laughs> or something. Anyway, I'm sure I'm not the only dental hygienist or dentist who feels this way. That's probably why the word Novocaine continues to still being used, even though it's incorrect. I don't know. Anyway, back to the purpose of this video, seven reasons you may be having a hard time getting numb at the dentist. Number one, the red hair gene. Some people with red hair have a special gene that is responsible responsible for both the color of their hair as well as pain responses. Those with this red hair gene, also some people don't actually have to have red hair, but red hair runs in their family, so it might just be a recessive gene as opposed to a dominant gene. You don't have to have red hair, but you have to have the gene. Regardless, this gene causes them to not respond to numbing or sedation medications the same way as those without the gene. Some experts recommend that redheads need about 20% more numbing medication than people with other hair colors. So if you are concerned that this is you, you, always tell your dentist beforehand so they can confirm that you are numb before they start working in your mouth and give you a little extra anesthetic if needed. Number two, pH imbalances. Sometimes drinking too much coffee right before your appointment can reduce the effectiveness of getting numb. Some dentists feel that caffeine can interfere with local anesthetic, but some people debate it and say that it's less about the caffeine and more about your natural pH. Either way, it can't hurt to avoid caffeine before your dental appointments. Also, some people who have a hard time getting numb actually say taking an antacid, such as Tums, the night before and or the morning of their dental appointment helps to combat their natural pH issue. Number three, infection. This one is probably one of the most common reasons why your dentist can't get you numb. If you have a major infection, such as a severe tooth abscess, the pus and fluid around that space will make it extremely difficult for the anesthetic to work correctly. This is actually one reason why a lot of dentists will prescribe an antibiotic leading up to your appointment, since it will reduce the severity of the infection and swelling if you have an infection or swelling, thus allowing the numbing medication to work more effectively. Just don't make the mistake of canceling your appointment because your tooth feels better after taking the antibiotic. The infection will still come back if you don't have it treated. Just because it feels better doesn't mean it's gone. They only gave you the antibiotics to lower the infection, not to cure it. Pause for a quick dental announcement. If you like teeth and you want to learn even more about teeth, I now have a weekly toothy newsletter. There's a link below in the bottom bar if you want to sign up to receive toothy tips in your email each week. Things like whitening hacks, how to afford the dentist. We tackle all the dental questions that you may have and I hope to see you there. Now back to the video. Number four, previous trauma or surgery. If you've ever had a major surgery such as an automobile accident or a broken jaw and it required reconstructive surgery, your nerve tissues might have been traumatized, scarred, or even displaced. In any of those scenarios, numbing the affected teeth could be challenging. So always be sure to communicate your medical history with your dentist beforehand. Number five, medications. Some types of medications can affect how local anesthetics work. Again, it's super important to review your health history and medications list beforehand. So never withhold any information about yourself with your dentist. And even if you aren't taking any current medications, certain numbing anesthetics can affect your heart because of the epinephrine, which we'll talk more about that in the next one. So yet again, just another reason why they want to know about your complete health history. And of course, with recreational drugs, if your dentist is not aware of what you're taking beforehand, they can actually make you using local anesthetic dangerous. So again, always tell your dentist your full health history and medications list. They are not going to judge you if you tell them you use drugs. They just wanna make sure they properly numb you up to fix your teeth without any side effects. Number six, patient anxiety. If you have dental anxiety, fear of the dentist, it can make it harder for your mouth to get numb. When your cortisol and adrenaline is pumping due to anxiety, it can chemically interfere with how the local anesthetic works. Also with epinephrine, back to the epi again, it can sometimes 
make your heart beat a little faster for a few minutes right after it's administered, which can sometimes make you feel even more anxious. So if you are anxious, my best advice is to ask your dentist if they have any nitrous oxide, laughing gas to help ease your nerves before they numb you up. And if you have severe anxiety, then some dentists will even prescribe you certain medications that you can take beforehand as long as you have someone to drive you to your appointment. I have a whole video all about the different types of dental sedation, which I'll link in the description box if you'd like to learn more. And lastly, number seven, poor injection technique. Now this is rare, but you never know. You might not be getting numb because of how the local anesthetic was injected. If the dental professional targets the wrong nerve or your tissue is difficult to get around, whatever the reason it was injected incorrectly, the medication won't work correctly and you won't get numb. This is very rare since dental professionals literally give injections all day, every day, and they're very experienced at numbing people up, but there's always a chance that this can happen. I guess it's the same as when you're getting your blood taken at the doctor's office. Sometimes they get it right away and other times they have to poke you 12 times until they find the vein or is that just me? <laughs> Anyway, in all, if you are someone who does not get numb easily at the dentist, be sure to always note that on your health history when visiting a new office and even remind them right before they numb you up each time, just so they are aware that you might need more anesthetic than others. I always appreciate it when a patient reminds me I would never be annoyed or anything. I want you to be comfortable. The more comfortable you are, the better I can get in there, right? So always communicate with us so we can accommodate your needs and make you as comfortable as possible. I hope this video helped you. Please like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications if it did. And if you want more teeth talk, you can visit my website, teethtalkgirl.com and hang out with me on Instagram. Peace, love, and teeth.